I think I was around nine years old when this event happened. You'd think that such an impactful memory would ingrain itself completely into my brain, that I would remember exactly when it happened, and every single small little detail, but it was one of those really scary things that I honestly would have been happier to just forget altogether. My dad and I liked to go camping all the time, you see. He began taking me when I was much younger, and I even had my own little pip tent. I loved it. It was small, but hey, so was I, so it worked out just fine in the end. My favorite thing about camping would be that Ben Lu of Ghost Stories, my dad would actually do this little puppet show for me. We would put up my tent to the side so the side wall of it would be facing the fire, and he would do this little shadow puppet thing with his hands. It was actually really fun, and he was super good at it too, surprisingly. The fact was that with a crackling fire behind him as he made these hand puppets, the images turned out to be really solid and sometimes really, really creepy. Generally, by the time he was done telling his story, I would be so tuckered out I'd fall right to sleep. I won't go into too much detail about the camping trip itself when this happened. It was just me and my father. My mom didn't really like camping, so she never went with us. We go out into the woods, set up our tents, and made the area up for the fire. We then went and did some fishing. We actually had a nice haul that day, which my father then cooked for us over the fire. I always did love fish, and love it to this day. No one can cook a fish as good as my father did. When it came closer to time to go to bed, I was excited because that meant two things. My dad and I would make some s'mores together, and then I would go into my tent with the s'mores while my dad told me his story, using his scary hand puppets. Once I had my plate full of treats, I eagerly rushed into my tent. I got all nestled into my sleeping bag and ate those s'mores while my dad told a few scary stories. It was pretty fun. I dozed off though before the ending of the last one. I woke up a little bit later, not even realizing how long I'd been asleep or even what time it was currently. I assumed I'd only dozed off for a moment though, and that my father must not have even realized this, because he still seemed to be doing his hand puppet show. I opened my eyes wide and sat up in my tent, watching him intently. He wasn't actually telling me a story anymore though. He was making a hand puppet of a bunny rabbit, and kind of just making it aimlessly hop around on the wall of the tent. I kept waiting for him to say something funny, or something scary, like it was a vicious killer rabbit or something, but he didn't say a single word. Instead, he just kept making this bunny hop around in a circle, coming closer to my tent, then going further away. He kept this up for quite a long time, too. I was a bit confused now, so I decided to open my tent and see if something was wrong. The shadows had gotten quite close now, so I unzipped the flap and opened it up, and looked over to my father, only to see it was not my father at all. It was a strange man I'd never seen before, with a sick grin on his face. He continued to make bunny motions with his hands, as he stared right into my eyes. Then he stopped, and he rushed over to the tent and grabbed me. I of course screamed, before the guy could get his hand over my mouth. My father woke up right away and came rushing out of the tent. When he saw the man struggling with me, he had the wherewithal to grab the fish skillet and smack the man upside the head with it twice before the guy fell over. I was now free, but my dad was not done yet. I can't tell you how many times he bashed this man over the head, who was now struggling to return to his feet. Eventually he managed to and ran stumbling off into the night. My dad decided it was best to just leave, rather than wait until the morning. Fortunately, we hadn't parked too far away. We grabbed all of our stuff, rushed to the truck, and went home right away. That strange man ruined camping for me for years. Whenever we talked about going, I would see that man's horrifying face and remember him grabbing me, and I would have to decline. This story happened back in the 1970s. Thinking back on it, it's kind of weird, 
because there's no way anyone could get away with something like this nowadays. I was 10 years old at the time and sitting in class. It was about 10.30 in the morning, I believe. We had been back from lunch for a while. The school secretary suddenly rushed in and handed the teacher a note. After reading the note, the teacher handed it back. Then she said, Josh, would you please go with Miss Harris? All of the kids in class went ooh, like kids do when they assume that another child just got in trouble. My teacher tried to quiet them down as I walked out and followed her into the hallway. She told me she'd just received a phone call from my father that my brother had been in a terrible accident. They couldn't come to pick me up, but they wanted me to come straight home right now. Now I walked to and from school. Everyone in my town did really. Only the kids who lived in the outskirts of town actually got to ride the bus. I grabbed my backpack and headed out right away. Of course, I was worried about my younger brother and figured I should get back as quickly as possible. I had been walking for only a few minutes when I started to hear footsteps right behind me. I turned around to check and saw a rather tall man was now following me from a bit far away his back. He was wearing a dark coat and covered his face but it was cold enough outside that I didn't think very much about it in the moment. We weren't the only two people out walking, as it was right in the middle of both a school and work day. My walk home was a large trek. I had to go down several different streets and through a park as well. When I turned down the first street, I was walking for a while before I heard the footsteps behind me again. I peeked around my shoulder and noticed the man had turned the corner as well, and was still following me. It was at this point I began to get a little bit nervous, but I was still not totally worried. The moment I did begin to get very worried was when I turned the following corners and still heard the man walking behind me. We had watched film strips at school about strangers, and all the frightening images those had put in my mind suddenly came rushing back. I began to think that this man was a legitimate kidnapper or something, as I got closer to the park, I decided to cut under a break in the chain link fence that some of us kids like to sneak through. A bigger guy wouldn't be able to get through that space, and I figured I'd be able to lose him really quickly. With a quick peek over my shoulder, I noticed the man was now not far behind me, so I had to hurry. When I came upon the fence, I saw the little trench under it. I knew I would fit right away, so I hurried up and slipped onto my belly and began to slide under. The problem with my plan was that all the previous times I'd tried to go under the fence, I hadn't had my backpack on my back, and I'd forgotten this. I didn't fit. My backpack got snagged on the fence. I hadn't been listening to the footsteps any longer, but it didn't matter anymore, because the man was right on me. He grabbed my foot and tried to pull me back from under the fence. I tried to kick him with my other foot, but I was just a small kid. It didn't do much good. While I was struggling in his grip, I kept trying to pull my arms out of the straps of my backpack. It was snagged, and I was not going to get it undone. I kept trying to kick the man, and although it did take a while, I was able to get the straps to slide off of me. The problem was this asshole still had my leg. I focused on repeatedly kicking his hand with my other leg, and he slightly lost his grip. He grabbed onto my shoe. That turned out to be a bit of luck that I needed though, as I was able to slip my foot right out of it. The man stumbled backward, and I had enough time to slip the rest of the way through the fence. I then got up and ran as fast as I could, with only one shoe through that park. Fortunately, there was a mother with two kids at the playground. I ran up to them crying and scared. The woman was very sweet and took me home to my parents. When I got home, my mom was home, but my dad wasn't. She was worried and thanked the woman who helped me, who also explained everything that happened. I swear, you've never seen a mother so grateful. But what shocked me the most was when I saw my little brother right there, sitting in front of the television and watching a game show. He wasn't hurt at all. My dad wasn't home waiting for me. My mom called the police, who found my backpack. It had been thoroughly emptied, and my belongings were scattered all over the place. My parents had never called the school. All we could figure out was that the man who attacked me 
had to have set the entire thing up. I never found out who he was either, but I always figured it had to be someone my parents knew. How else would he have been able to know when I was at school, and even who I was, that I had a brother as well? In the beginning of this story, I mentioned that this sort of thing couldn't happen nowadays. Well, I only guessed that really. I don't know that for a fact, but I sure as hell hope it can't, because that shit is pretty damn scary. This happened when I was around 13 or so. I was quite a tomboy back in the day and had a huge collection of Nerf guns. Although I did have some girlfriends, my friends were mainly guys who had collections which rivaled my own. My group consisted of around five people. One day, my friends and I, being the kids we were, decided to organize a Nerf war held at our local park. It wasn't the typical big open green space though, it was more of a forest, as we were in Australia. Because of this, the park was filled with big gum trees to hide behind and had a long creek running down the middle. The perfect conditions for a Nerf war. We set the date, and one of my friends said he would bring a bunch of his friends over as well, so we'd have much bigger teams and a bigger event. This meant we'd have about four people on each side. We agreed, and they came as well. By the time the chosen Sunday rolled around, we were all ready and kitted up for the fight. I, like everyone else, had brought most of my Nerf guns along, which I then shared amongst my team. Some of us even brought walkie-talkies and other special gadgets. To onlookers, we probably looked quite silly, but we really didn't care. The excitement of being with all my friends forced back my usual shy nature. Anyway, after everyone arrived, we started working on our bases. Then, we began the war. All was going well, until about an hour in. I sat alone at our team's makeshift base. My main weapon had jammed, and I was trying to fix it by poking sticks into the barrel and repeatedly pressing the trigger. All to no avail, of course. The others on my team were off scouting through the woods. All I could hear were nerf blasters going off until an unsettling whistling noise suddenly came from behind me. I could hear footsteps on the dried leaves, getting closer and closer. At first, I assumed it was one of my teammates playing a joke on me, so I kept working on my gun with my back to the trees. But then, I saw him. His face still haunts me to this day. There was a tall old man, probably in his sixties or so, walking right by me. He had unwashed clothes, and he was swinging a grey plastic bag, which looked as though it was filled with dried blood. I couldn't really tell what it was. He noticed me, and stopped walking, standing about fifteen feet away. His eyes widened as he looked over at me, and he continued to whistle some tune I didn't recognize. I remember feeling terrified. I was alone, with nothing but a jammed Nerf gun for protection. I thought if I kept ignoring him, he might go away, but of course he didn't. He stopped in place and kept staring at me. My thoughts turned to making a plan of action. He didn't look like he'd be able to outrun me, but I still felt too terrified to move. Instead, I reached for my phone and dialed for my mom, still not meeting his uncomfortable gaze. I held the phone up to my ear and tried to appear as though I didn't even notice him. Ryan... I flinched as I didn't hear my mom's voice. I heard his calling out to me. He stopped the whistling and began to speak to me in a raspy voice. Come and play with me, little girl. He started to swing the bag once more. Our eyes met, just as my mom picked up the phone. I whispered to her there was a strange man trying to talk to me. I could feel myself tearing up. Even now, I can't forget the way he was staring at me like an animal who decided he was going to eat me. My mom was furiously telling me to calm down, and she couldn't understand what I was saying. The man finally stopped staring when my younger team member called out to me, saying their gun was broken. It happened to me my younger sister, who my mom had forced me to bring along. The man turned away from me and started towards her instead. I was begging my mom to come and find us, and that the man was now after my sister, was only nine at the time. 
She told me to gather up my sister and everyone else who was with us. I was so scared, but I managed to find the courage to run into the woods and call to everyone else for help. Thankfully, the man hadn't caught my sister yet. The others all came running. Only one of them seemed to have seen him walking through the woods prior. They said he was walking quite quickly, almost running. They thought it was odd, but thought nothing of it at the time. Once we all gathered together, I guess the man was intimidated by our numbers and took off running back into the forest. The worst and most terrifying thing that ever happened to me happened because of my former stepdad. Even now, years later, I get so pissed off just thinking about it. If I could, I would beat the shit out of him. After my father passed away, my mother fell into a horrible and understandable depression. She began dating this guy who, while my father was still alive, she wouldn't have even considered giving the time of day to. Jack was a big guy, and a complete lowlife as well. I really don't want to go into too much description of him, because it infuriates me to even try. I can't stand this guy. My mother's relationship with Jack was completely toxic. They would go to these biker bars and go out and drink all night. I'd never seen my mom drunk a day in my 15 years of life before, but once she met Jack, she got drunk all the time. After less than a month of dating, my mom let him move in. She didn't even ask my opinion. Now, I know what most of you are probably thinking. She didn't need my permission, and I realized that it's not permission I was worried about. I feel like she should have asked my opinion on the matter, and made up her own mind after that. Jack didn't work, of course. My mom did, and he would stay home all day on his lazy ass, watching TV and drinking beer. He knew I didn't like him, but he lorded this fact over me. Whenever I looked like I was angry with him or that I wasn't going to follow his orders, he'd say words I would never forget. You damn well do it, or I'm gonna cut your balls off. He said that to me all the time. I never took it seriously. I mean, the guy was a jackass and a loser, but he wasn't stupid enough to actually do anything physical to me. I mean, if he even tried, he'd be sitting in a damn prison cell. It would always be something like, get me a fucking beer or I'll cut your balls off, or over something stupid and minor. I wasn't really happy with this. He even said it in front of my mom, and she just laughed. She married him too, and it was quick. He had been living there for only three months when she married him, and like most of these stories, that was the moment when things began to get even worse. The nights of going out and drinking at the bar still happened, but rather than coming home and having a fun time, they'd always be fighting. I tried to spend as much time as I could in my bedroom, not listening to their bullshit. He threatened to smack her all the time, but he never did. He would then guilt my mom into forgiving him, and the whole thing would start all over again the next night. The thing that makes me angry, that makes me fume with unadulterated anger, happened on my 16th birthday. Of course, neither of them did anything to celebrate for me. My mom and Jack went out drinking. I went to my bedroom to read, because it was the only thing I really could do. I was reading late into the night. It had to be around 1.30 in the morning or so. When I heard Jack's bike pull up in the driveway, I heard them arguing and rolled my eyes and groaned, wishing I could at least not have to deal with this on my birthday. They rushed into the house, yelling and screaming. I don't even know what they were arguing about. The one thing that was different this time, though, was I heard my mom scream at Jack. Then I heard the unmistakable sound of a savage hit and the loudest crashing I'd ever heard in my life. I jumped out of my bed, scared and knowing what had just happened. When I got into the living room, my fears were confirmed. My mom was laying bleeding and unconscious on the floor over a broken coffee table. Anger flooded my body. I ran up and tried to tackle that piece of shit that hit my mother. Although I slammed into him pretty hard, it didn't have much effect on him. He easily smacked me and knocked me hard to the floor. I was seeing stars when he grabbed me by my shirt and dragged me into the kitchen. I didn't know what he was doing, but he grabbed something off the counter, picked me up and slammed me hard against the kitchen wall, completely knocking the wind out of me. It was then I saw him holding a knife in his hand. I winced 
expecting Jack to kill me right then. Instead, to my shock, he reached down, undid my belt, and opened up my jeans, pushing them and my boxers to the floor. I was confused at first, but then the words he'd always threatened me with came rushing back to my head. Jack really was going to cut my balls off. He moved the knife down, while holding me against the wall by my neck with one arm. I was thrashing and struggling, doing everything I could to get this fucker off me, but I couldn't force him off no matter what I did. I felt tears going down my eyes, completely convinced I was about to be castrated. I felt him begin to cut. If you've never been cut in a sensitive place before, you might not understand what happened next. It was a blinding pain. Everything went white. Flailing in agony, I kicked out over and over. I kicked him in the balls, the knees, the stomach. I even kicked his hand, knocking the knife away. My adrenaline was really rushing. It was the shock of what was going on that had him struggling the most. Then a shot rang out. He let go of me and screamed. I guess a beautiful story would have been that he fell over and I saw my mother standing there holding the gun behind him. But no, there was a gun being held by our kindly next-door neighbor, Janice, a 67-year-old widow who never put up with anyone's bullshit. She'd heard everything going on, grabbed her rifle, and rushed over. If you've never seen an old grandma pissed off and holding a rifle, you've never lived before. Jack went to prison, and my mom, of course, divorced him. I was happy she wasn't seriously injured. Jack had actually seriously cut my privates, which led me to believe my balls weren't his only target that night. Fortunately, it wasn't too bad that it wasn't able to be fixed, but it hurt worse than anything I've ever experienced before or since. I got a pretty gnarly scar. At least it makes an interesting story, but my blood boils just telling it. Generally, I try to tell people it was just a childhood injury and not talk about it after. I've never seen Jack again, and my mom never got married again either.